Hey guys, and welcome back for another video. In my gallery, I have two brand new setups, so I thought this might be a great time to discuss how I managed the first few weeks of an aquarium's life. I feel the first two months of an aquarium are the most important in determining how successful it will be. I've had layouts that I mismanaged at the beginning, and I had to take them down and reset them just because it felt like a lost cause. So hopefully through my experiences, I can help all of you have a successful start. If you haven't been watching lately or are new here, the two new layouts are both the largest and the smallest ones in the gallery. My ADA 120P Aquarium and my ADA Mini M Aquarium. Check out the build videos if you haven't already. I've learned different methods about how to start an aquarium properly. Through my years in the hobby and after creating dozens of layouts, I've kind of developed my own system that I'll share with you. So let's break it all down starting from the beginning. You've just set up the aquarium, filled it up, turned on the filter, and it's a bit cloudy. It's perfectly normal, and with good filtration, you'll see that clear up within a day or so. So what do I do in the first week of an aquarium? I call this the honeymoon phase, because it's very unlikely that you're going to have any major problems in the first week. Despite this, I'm always doing about a 50% water change every other day. When I first entered the hobby, the common advice was to do the water changes daily, but I never really understood the meaning of doing this in week one. I think this philosophy goes back to the old Amazonia version one, which leached so much ammonia within the first few weeks that you really needed to mitigate this by doing the daily water change. If you have a new filter, your aquarium will not be cycled, meaning you won't have a colony of beneficial bacteria to properly break down waste in your aquarium. It takes several weeks for this process to complete. To prevent ammonia and nitrite from increasing to dangerous levels that could cause plant melt, we do the large frequent water changes to mitigate this. I will also add additional products like Seachem Stability which helps to more quickly establish the aquarium biofilter. Besides this, I'm also trying to figure out how much CO2 to add to the aquarium. There's a bit of trial and error here when I'm trying to observe my CO2 indicator to see if I'm adding the correct amount of CO2 for the new layout. I watched the bubble counter not to really count, but just to measure how much I'm changing it each time I make an adjustment. As the plants mature and grow, I'll eventually need to add more CO2, but it's good to get a baseline and it helps the plants to grow well in the initial weeks. So for week one, it's really simple. Do 50% water changes every other day and dial in your CO2 levels. If you want, you can also add additional products to help speed up the cycle. With my 120p aquarium, I used all new filter media, but with my Mini M, I reused filter media from a previous layout. There are big advantages to this if you're able to do it. By reusing old filter media, your tank is cycled from day one and has much less risk of ammonia and nitrite buildup. You can add livestock much sooner and you won't experience nearly as much plant melt. As a result, I'd argue we'd have a less risk of algae also. With my mini M aquarium, I was able to add some shrimp after a week and fish after two weeks or so. For acclimating the fish, I kind of do it the old fashioned way. I add them to a small container from their old water and slowly add my tank water gradually until they're acclimated to it. Then I net them out and let the water pour into a bucket so it doesn't end into my tank. And then I gently add them to the aquarium with a net.
things are very different from my 120p. For week two, since I didn't reuse the old filter media, I started to get an incredible plant growth in the first week, but I did notice some melting, particularly in the Elio Kars Pervola, but also a bit with the HC Kuba. I tested my water and sure enough it had readings of ammonia and nitrite. So this is telling me that the aquarium is not cycled. So it will be necessary for me to change a lot more water to prevent the ammonia from melting my plants. You can consider adding a large amount of Seachem Safe or Prime to detoxify the ammonia and nitrite as well, but it's kind of putting a band-aid on the situation. I also noticed green dust algae appearing on the glass. This kind of algae is pretty common in new setups with bright light and unstable water parameters. I've also noticed it in minimal iwagumis the most. To contrast with the Mini M, there was a tiny bit of diatom algae or brown algae on the stones and a bit on the plants, but with some water changes and the addition of shrimp, it was quickly taken care of. Back to my 120p, I clean the green dust algae off the glass and CO2 diffuser and perform a very large water change. As a side note, maybe I should create an algae guide sometime in the future. I have somewhat unique approaches to some types of algae, like the green dust algae for example. Let me know if you'd be interested in a video like that. I spend a great deal of time cleaning the stones. I wasn't exactly sure what this dust was, but later realized it must be some sort of calcium buildup. The ADA Rio stone is a limestone and raises the hardness in the aquarium. So it's possible for this buildup to appear initially and get really dirtied up by the stones quickly. Thankfully it was easy to get off. When I tried to clean the green dust algae off the diffuser, it wouldn't come off so easily, so I put in my bleach solution and that took care of it within a few minutes. Because of the lack of stability in the 120p, I'm continuing with very large water changes every other day. I'm going to keep this up until the tank is finished cycling, I think. Meanwhile, in my mini M, by week two, I'm able to do just two or three water changes per week. In fact, by the end of week two, I'm already starting to trim some of the plants in my mini M. It's a bit early to do this, but because the Glossostigma carpet was just growing tall, I decided to cut it back to teach it to grow shorter. Also, the older Eliocaris parvula leaves looked like they weren't going to grow very well, so I decided to cut it back so it could focus on new growth instead. I also cleaned the lily pipes and the CO2 diffuser for the first time. By week 3 of the ADA 120p, I'm hoping to get the ammonia and nitrite levels down so I can begin adding the algae crew. I'll have a lot of Amano shrimps and some Autosynclus too. The autos are particularly sensitive to unstable water parameters, so I'll have to be really careful. The goal by week three and four is that we can go down to twice per week water changes and only once per week after that. But this is going to entirely depend on how well the aquarium is running. If you have a ton of initial algae problems, you'll probably have to keep every other day water changes for longer or even consider changing water every day. 
you kind of just need to see how well your aquarium is doing and make adjustments accordingly. Seeing that my ADA120P is already having green dust algae, I'll probably be leaning towards larger water changes and other algae mitigation methods. Each system is different. I've run some that were perfectly smooth and others that required a lot more TLC. It's a lot of work, but putting in this time will give you an amazing result and you will love your aquarium. Like I said at the beginning, this is how I keep my aquariums in the initial weeks. There are a lot of other methods out there like dry starting or dark starting the aquarium. There might even be other methods that I'm just not even aware of. To give some background, dry starting means that you grow your plants, particularly carpeting plants, after you plant the aquarium but without filling it up with water. So you leave it empty and you cover the aquarium to keep the humidity high and let the plants grow immersed. I'm not a fan of this method because when you finally flood the tank, the plants really have difficulty adjusting to their underwater environment. Dark starting your aquarium has become a lot more popular and it's when you set up your hardscape and substrate and then flood the tank without planting it. So you essentially run your aquarium for several weeks to let it cycle and stabilize to avoid the initial plant melt and diatoms. Advocates of the method enjoy not needing to do big water changes in the initial weeks. I've only tried this method once, but I found that once I get a few weeks in and plant it fully, I just start to get the algae afterwards anyway, so I never really understood the point of it. My preferred method is to do it every other day, water changes for the first two weeks, and then trying to cut back to twice per week for another two weeks or so. But using established mature filter media, if possible, makes it such a more simple transition for the plants and the livestock. In a way that's kind of similar to a dark start anyway, since you're using established filter media. I'm kind of kicking myself for not using any of my old filter media for the 120p, but I'm kind of suffering a bit so I can show you the process. I also don't mind the challenge. I hope this gives you guys some good information for when you're trying to start your new layouts. If you have any tips or tricks of your own, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'm now offering memberships to people who would like to further support the channel. You'll get exclusive behind-the-scenes content of the gallery, along with other perks if you're interested. Regardless, I appreciate you all for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time.